Welcome to the Underground Cookery School Knife Masterclass, where today I'm going to run through a few knives, um, explain a little bit, a bit about uh, those knives that I think um, are well worth you investing in, um, and more importantly, how to look after and sharpen them. Um, the first thing is, try and get one of these, a knife block. Um, if you go onto the linked page of my website, there's an online cook shop called Nesbitt's. I don't know why I always promote them, because I don't get anything out of it, but they are fantastically good. And they're about 14 or 15 quid. It's just a good place um, to keep knives. Don't keep them in drawers because um, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of chefs get cut. Right, the most important knife I think is um, what's sometimes known as a chopper or a chef's knife. And the main characteristic of this knife is it's got a very thick heel and it's ideal for um, slicing vegetables. And um, if you see my um, demonstration on how to dice onion and garlic. This is the knife that I use. It's also very good for things like leeks, carrots, celery um, and root vegetables as well. So that's an absolute must. That goes straight back in there. And the second most important knife, funnily enough, I think is one of those. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a serrated edge um, and these are very good for obviously bread, which is what it's intended for, but fantastic for things like fruit, taking the skin off a pineapple, um, also doing things like uh, melon, very good for that, thank God I thought of that, um, apples, pears, taking the skin off of those if you're thinking of poaching them. Um, it's also very good for um, portioning up desserts um, and highly recommended. Um, the brand that I always use are Victoria Knox, who are the people who did Swiss Army pen knives. Right, um, we have uh, a carving knife here. Um, the main characteristics of this knife are um, they are long and thin. And the idea, or, or, or the main usage for this, is um, really just to uh, carve things like lamb, beef. Um, that is what you would use if you were doing a Sunday roast. Um, a smaller version is a boning knife, and you would use something like that if you were um, taking the meat off, or flesh I should call it, off uh, fish, um, or even chicken. It's actually a very good knife to carve chicken because it's much smaller and obviously a lot easier con to control. So that's another important one. But if you were actually only going to get three knives, I would probably say the three most important ones um, are the veg knife there, pastry or the uh, bread knife there and the carving knife. I've got a couple of extra ones. Um, chefs tend to find that uh, these are quite useful. Um, they're very good for getting underneath um, pastry um, and if you use, I'm just going to get one out of the drawer, you use these pastry stacks so you um, uh, I don't know, want to make some sort of a mousse, very nice for smoothing over. Also if you're doing things like tiramisu and you want to smooth it over, that is a great little implement, so I can highly recommend that. Um, over here, um, that's a, a tomato knife. Um, ideal, uh, ideal for cutting things like, obviously, tomatoes. It's got a nice pointed edge to that. And later on in my series, I'll show you how to skin tomatoes and then make a lovely tomato sauce out of them. But a small serrated knife is absolutely essential for all the reasons that uh, a big one is. Um, um, it's always good to have um, a baby knife. Um, chefs use these for um, barreling and turning vegetables, making little pretty uh, shapes out of them. You won't need to do that, I wouldn't have thought. That's rather patronising, didn't mean to be so. Um, and finally, um, that's quite scary. That's for making steaks with. Um, I really only put it in because I've got it, and I thought, you know, you'd all be very impressed with the size of my knife. Right, so we know about knives now. What I do want to uh, um, discuss is how to sharpen them. And there are two ways of doing that. I'm going to do a little demonstration here. Um, I have a pencil, and the reason I've got this is because I want to show you um, how to sharpen a pencil using a knife. Um, you need to go one way, like that, and then obviously you need to do the other side. So go one side, and then the other side. One side. Now, because it's a pencil, and you, I, I suppose, effectively, you want to get it sharp on all four sides, I'm going to go down the other sides. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is we've now got more of a point than we did before. 
And um, the idea is if you go one side, you have to even it out the other side. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean when it comes to sharpening knives. Here is um, a steel, which is one way of sharpening a knife. To be perfectly honest, it's not, um, I think, the best way of, uh, of sharpening a knife, but I'm going to show you it anyway. Um, if you place a knife on top of the steel, I'm going to use a clean knife, here we go, um, give it a slight angle and just run the knife all the way down it and then press it down on the underside and come back back and back and what we're doing is we're moulding um, an angle on that knife so if you go along one way and then back 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 forward back forward back forward back and you've just got to keep on doing that until the knife gets sharp and obviously the more you do it the quicker you can get I'm trying to do it really quick to impress you but actually you don't need to. Just press the knife down on the steel, give it a bit of an angle, run it all the way down, and then go um, back down like that. Now the other thing that it is very important to do is most people just go down, actually, how do they do it? They do it like that. They only sharpen a tiny little bit. Make sure you get all of the knife on the steel so you're working from top to bottom, or in this case, bottom to top, and then top to bottom. It's very important to do both angles, like that. I don't like these. They ran out very quickly. Funnily enough, I don't even have one. I ran out and bought one today, and it's, even that's not great. Um, they also um, have a very short life. They only last about um, a couple of months if you're using them regularly. Um, so my favorite or preferred method of sharpening a knife is just by using this. It's a whetstone. Now, I've pre-wet it, because I'm very well organized. And what I'm going to do now is just press um, the knife down on the, the stone, but give it a little bit of an angle. And just working from top to bottom, um, you can already, you can actually hear the knife sharpening. It's going to keep going. And the idea is just to mould a bit of an angle on both sides so that it sharpens up. My teeth are going on edge, so I'm not going to do it for much longer. And also you can't hear me talk, but that is how you sharpen a knife. These do need to be wet, and again, you can buy these in the online cook shop at Nesbitt's. So hopefully, um, you'll all now have very sharp knives. You already know how to chop, because so I've shown you how to do that on another instructional film. Um, happy cooking.